ABS and TCS. Oh, who needs them? So I've just been to a demonstration uh, a couple of days ago put on by the Traffic Accident Commission, TAC, and Vic Road, no, yes, and Vic Roads and BMW and Ducati and Bosch. Uh, about ABS on the motorcycles, ABS and traction control. It's a free event, uh, I think marketed to um, riding instructors and salespeople, etc. But I think whoever wanted to attend could, if you knew that it was on. So thankfully, a friend of mine who is a riding instructor invited me along. Thanks Mark, and I uh, found it quite interesting, it was pretty good. Yeah, so the demonstration was started off with an, I guess a, a class, a classroom sort of exercise where we all took a seat and the Bosch representatives talked about the evolution of um, ABS systems uh, that on their first BMW that applied traction control back in, I've forgotten the date, I keep thinking 88, but I'm not sure if it was that long ago, anyway, it's some, something in the order of that, um, the traction control unit weighed 11 kilograms, <coughs> yeah, so that's fairly heavy, especially when you try and slap one of those on a sports bike, but um, anyway, they've, they've progressed fairly rapidly I guess and they're down to uh, a 700 gram unit which is pretty much the industry standard most manufacturers are around that mark uh, Bosch is the only manufacturer of ABS units uh, for bikes uh, in Australia uh, but obviously there's overseas manufacturers fit units on overseas models as well. Yeah, so I think probably most people understand roughly how ABS, which is anti-lock braking system, not anti-braking system, anti-lock braking system, how it works and traction control, which is effectively exactly the same thing but in reverse. Yeah, I think most people you know, understand how how it works. That basically you apply the brakes, and when the wheel senses that it has locked, it releases uh, the calipers fractionally and allows the wheel to continue to turn. Now, the difference between cheap ABS and look at this guy, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, the difference between expensive ABS and cheap ABS, I think, is you know the, the reaction times of the unit because they all essentially will release the brakes, uh, but it's uh, it's a matter of how quickly can they do that and how accurately can they they release and apply, release and apply, release and apply. So they continued on to yeah, teach us basically how, how the systems work and and uh, mm, 40 zone shit and uh, and then gave us a demonstration uh, basically to prove they had quite you know three experienced riders a BMW representative uh, a motorcycle racer and a Bosch guy. No, it was a Ducati guy. No, someone else. Anyway, they um, they were quite experienced riders, and then they demonstrated with and without ABS switched on. And um, you know, one of the more interesting things, one's demonstrations was the best 
best attempt apply at brakes. So they would brake as hard as they could without ABS. Uh, and you could hear the front wheels locking, releasing, locking, releasing. You know, they're doing a really good job. And then they do it with ABS where effectively they just jam on the brakes as hard as they can and let the ABS unit do all the work. And uh, yeah, the obviously the ABS, well not obviously, but the ABS you know, could outperform the rider. So I'm going to show some of the footage from that from that event. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll let you watch. I'll, I'll take out some of the more boring parts, but I guess the main exercises I wanted to show. So yeah, enjoy. So now we're gonna look at the uh, front apply and the rear apply. So you could see that, that the wheel was locking up and basically the rider would have dropped the bike and himself on the tarmac. And now you see the same thing with ABS, with the front only apply. So look at the front wheel and you see the, the front wheel is not locking. Even it's a very slippery surface. So this is a, a metal plate with water on so you can barely walk on it. And we see here again the same maneuver, ABS active on the front wheel. So you can see that the wheel is not locking and the, the rider is all the time stable and in a safe situation. So we, we're trying to keep the surface wet um, to, uh, to really ensure that it's very slippery. So this is really simulating an ice surface. So we're going to do that now as an uh, emergency stop with both wheels. So you can see there's no chance to get that. And now you see the red bike also with both wheels engaged and both will have an um, ABS intervention and the bike will stay stable. So we are doing this here at about 30 kph. You can see also both wheels doing an ABS stop and the, the bike is all the time stable and stays upright. So now we're coming more to a uh, different surface, quite common in Australia. We will have here, looking over at the gravel, yeah, we're simulating here in a kind of a gravel mixed surface between tarmac and gravel with a uh, loose stone sitting on, on tarmac, which is quite common here in Australia, outside some very country roads. So now we're looking at the front wheel and when the wheel is locking up and we can see the um, that can is uh, doing here a brake and yeah it's quite difficult to, to hold the stability even with our triggers and now we see the, the red bike coming in with a front only panic apply like also a pull on the brake and we can see here that the ABS is also giving a very short stopping distance compared to the other bike with a locked front wheel. Mm. And we will do now a front and rear apply also with ABS and showing here also that deep slip is not causing an instability. Like the bike is in enduro mode and the rear wheel is allowing you to drift and to slip, but it's not locking up. So the whole bike is stable in the same situation. And we will now do the same thing, doing a panic apply on the front wheel like you, you the driver will uh, squeeze the, the brake lever to, to lock the wheel with a non-ABS bike and the other bikes will demonstrate the same stop with uh, with ABS. So we're looking at the front front wheel and seeing, okay, the, the bike <laughs> stopping. <Hey. laughs> yeah, it looks quite spectacular. We don't want to see that outside on the road without ABS. <laughs> so now we're doing the exact same maneuver with with ABS, we're coming quite quick in, like this is uh, at 70 kph. And you see, nothing happened, very stable. Also, with the next bike, we will do a full stop, like a panic apply on the front wheel. It's like you're squeezing just to brake hard without controlling, like really pushing it hard. And the ABS system will, is taking care of the. Uh, of the whole control of the wheel that it stays stable you have a good stopping distance and the vehicle stays stable that's the most important thing here so now we will do some stopping distance comparison 
this is not a competition between the bikes, so we have different speeds, but we want to show the difference between a best effort applied, so the driver is trying to, without ABS control, to stop the bike, which would be like a traditional old school bike, and then we will do the same thing with ABS to, to demonstrate here also the stopping distance advantage with the ABS. It's almost impossible to outbreak the ABS system. So we will see the the gray bike going on the gravel and asphalt because it has outrigger so in case something happens. And now we're seeing the, the silver bike going on on the uh, red asphalt and we're putting here a marker to, to mark the distance. And we will do the same thing on the red asphalt now with uh, With, uh, ABS. So we will see here this on uh, asphalt, dry asphalt, with the driver, best driver effort. And now we do the same thing on the on the gravel. Like. So the next run will be on the on the wet asphalt with a silver bike, uh, with ABS as comparison. So we start braking at uh, uh, two small cones over there on the right hand side, and we can see here a significant improvement. Let's say 1.5 meters. <laughs> that is about one half two meters at least shorter stopping distance. And now we do the same thing here on the asphalt, like, with a higher speed. <laughs> What's that? I'd say his ABS was not on. Went wrong. <laughs> ABS does that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to redo that. <laughs> I've had it happen to me before. So now we're looking here at the gravel track, where Ken is coming in and doing an ABS stop. And as a US system is, it's a technical help here. It's here we go. Very nice. Here we can really good, see a good difference in, in stopping distance on on the dry asphalt. That's about three meters shorter stopping distance on, on dry asphalt. And um, yeah, as I said, it, it's a technical system. It's there to be in the background active to support you, but it's it's not taking control of you. So you can, as you could see, we, we did the best effort driver apply to, to stop the motorbike in, in a traditional way without driving it into an ABS control. But in case of you panicking, you're braking too hard, or you're in an emergency situation where you want to really stop hard, then, then you can press hard in and the ABS system will will take control and help you to get safe out of this situation. So we, we changed now the bikes and now we are looking at rear wheel lift up compensation. So Miles is showing, okay, you can do this uh, rear wheel lift up here. This is with a deactivated system, so in a sports bike you, you do this stoppy. We, we call that stoppy when you rear, lift the rear into the air and then uh, but this is not ideal for your stopping distance because you're losing traction on the rear axle. And uh, now he will show that with a uh, rear lift uh, wheel up compensation uh, activated. And uh, we can see that the system will prevent the bike from tipping over. You can see that it's diving in, but the, the bike stays stable on the ground and also even creates a shorter stopping distance. And now we're going to do that so also with a tricky situation on the open roads, you can have like icy patches. So you're riding, it's dry and there's an icy patch and here it really comes into helping because it's very difficult for a rider to control it. And there the electronic systems like we showed before with the ABS, also with the TCS will help you. So the first run we're going to do without uh, TCS on. As you can see, there are some 
some nice slip on the rear wheel, it was spinning out, and here we see it again with the, with the silver bike. Um, and you can see also the, the jerk when, when he comes to a change of the surface. Now we're looking at the same situation with the TCS system active, giving you a an, an big advantage in terms of traction and also stability of the vehicle. So you can definitely see here, there's no, no slacking around on the eyes, and we're going to repeat that here with the silver bike as well. So the TCS system is really effectively preventing this uh, excessive slip on the rear wheel to keeping the bike stable. Well, I hope you enjoyed your ABS demonstration. Uh, I think it was... Yeah, I guess a lot of it's probably common knowledge, but for... Well, it should be common knowledge, but for learner riders... Uh, yeah, it's something that you should definitely consider if, when purchasing a new bike. Has it got ABS? Has it got traction control? Uh, these are helpful items, and I think actually best... I think actually that the best uh, description of it was by uh, the Vic Rhodes guy talking at the demonstration saying you know, when a motorcyclist, when there's an emergency and you need to you know, stop you, uh, a motorcyclist has so many things to consider he jams on the brakes he needs to control his front brake to get the maximum braking that he can without skidding. He has to control the rear brake to get the maximum braking that he can without skidding. He has to look at where can I, where's the best place to crash, or where's the best place to steer so that I don't hit something solid. Um, uh, what, you know, what's the other traffic doing around me? There's a lot of things that you're thinking, uh, that you need to think about. Uh, in a split second and if you don't have to think about how hard can I jam on the brakes that's one less thing that you have to worry about and it gives you more more time to concentrate on the other the other items that you need to be thinking about so that's you know the biggest the biggest plus for ABS there's always going to be someone that says, well, I can, you know, I can outbreak ABS. And, you know, maybe if you're Mr. Awesome, you can. Yeah, but the fact is that if there's one less thing that you need to worry about, then that can only be a good thing. And there's never any harm in, in having it on. Uh, if you can outbreak it, then you do your best at braking, and you'll find that the ABS never kicks in. If you're that awesome. Anyway, until next time.